Good morning, everyone. Please turn to hymn number two, Glory to His Name. We'll sing all four stanzas of hymn number two, Glory to His Name. cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I am so gladly I've entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. All right, good morning on this Lord's Day. We'll start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you can gather in the house of God. Pray that the flower passing will be going well uh, last week and this week. We hope people will be signing up for our training school and get back to get a business of getting people saved. So help us have a good Lord's Day today and be with us as we look into your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'll be turning over to Nathan now. Um, he'll talk more about announcements about flower passing a little bit later. Okay, great. Let's have you turn to Revelations. So we were talking about the last plague being darkness. And, uh, of course, the book of Revelations also talk, talks about darkness in the future. Last time we covered the book of Joel, and uh, that talks about darkness of the future. And we're going to go to Revelations chapter 6, verse 12. While you're turning to Revelation 6, 12, um, there's a lot of things that um, I might as well mention. Number 612. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of those who passed out flyers. And you're probably wondering what the results are. So the results are right now we have two that sign up. But Melvin said there's several in the pipeline that uh, caught in. And we, ha we haven't called back, uh, which is good. I want to thank you. And I'll make this announcement later on, uh, right after Melvin's message, that um, uh, we last week it was it was a, a it was a long afternoon. We did the school at four o'clock, and then we went all the way up to Beacon up to uh, six thirty. But this one coming up at Hoover is really easy. We're done at four thirty. We get to go home, and whatever you guys do at home, watch TV or whatever. So, <laughs> um, let's see, what, ha what else happened? Um, I think that's uh, what's interesting is, uh, did any anyone watch the Prefontaine Classic Races this weekend? Okay. Uh, I thought it was interesting that I happened to mention about the runner, um, Allison Felix, and uh, how during the Olympic races, 
She's been competing for what 20 years. She started at 18. She was at Athens. She was at uh, Beijing. She was at London. She was at Rio, and now she's at Tokyo. So it's about uh, she's about 36 years old. And in nor normal circumstances, 36 years old just don't get medals in track and field because you're competing against 18 years olds and 20 years olds. So for those of you who saw that race, um, in that race where she was running the 200, she had to lean forward and she barely got the bronze. Okay, so um, of course I was rooting for her. I wasn't expecting a gold because she's 36. You know, a lot of you guys are 36. How fast can you run, right? You can't run faster than 20 years old. And I thought God was really merciful to allow her to go out with a bronze. Of course, she got the, mo uh, the gold in uh, the relay. But what was really interesting is what happened at the, the races uh, this week. Okay. And I'll, you know, I'll just pick, you know, Brandon here since he didn't watch it. Hey, Brandon. So, um, Allison Felix ran the 200 yesterday. Which place would you guess she got? Okay. Third place. Believe it or not, she was last. So I think God was so merciful that God allowed her to peak right at the Olympics because, you know, you can't peak all the time. You have the time the peaking perfectly. I thought he was so merciful in that he allowed her to peak, get a medal. And now, um, now as she's getting older, she gets to look back at big, her big accomplishments. Can you imagine if she didn't peak during the Olympics, she was last, it would be kind of shameful. So I said, wow, God's merciful. Um, I'm glad I watched the pre -font. You know, I like watching. I like track and field. I, I like seeing speed. And uh, track and field was at Eugene, Oregon. And uh, I was watching another one. Um, you know, this, this sounds kind of weird, but um, a lot of times you may say, well, there's so many Africans from Africa. Uh, who do you root for? Okay. And I think last week I asked, was it Chris or was it I asked Tim? Uh, who would they root for between two names? So here's here's two names I thought was interesting. Um, did I ask Tim or did I ask Chris last week? I, okay, this time I asked Chris. Okay, Chris, who do you think I should root for? The African name Mohammed or the African name Emmanuel? <laughs> Emmanuel. I just thought it was kind of weird. His name was, you know, the, the two ladies... One was, you know, Mohammed and one was Faith, okay? But this time it was two men, one named Mohammed and one named Emmanuel. Come on, that's just like calling your son Jesus. Anyway, um, so yeah, I was entertained by the races yesterday. Um, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, here's something else that's going on with me. So um, this coming weekend, I'm going on a cruise, and it's supposed to be for Haiti, Okay. And as you probably know, several bad things happened in Haiti recently. Uh, I think last week there was an earthquake, so I guess I can't go to Haiti. And the month before, someone assassinated the president. So I guess I'm stuck going to the Bahamas and Jamaica. And uh, <clears throat> so um, that's what happened. And let's see, did I see a new bird species this morning? Yeah, I guess I did. Took a picture. Um, okay, so here we are. Revelation. So um, we're talking about darkness, and uh, Revelations uh, six twelve says, um, "Yeah, I got six twelve. And I beheld when he grasped open the sixth seal, and lo, there was there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And I don't know if you happen to see this week the uh, when the sun did. You know, living in the sunset, you don't see the sun. So I'm in San Leandro. When I see the sun, it is red, okay, from the smoke. And, uh, <clears throat> but um, um, verse number 12, it's, it's not going to be just red. It's going to be really black. It says, the sun became black as sack cloth of hair. Okay, so you know how black hair is. And, <clears throat> and I think also it refers to the thickness of the blackness. Uh, verse number 13, the stars of heaven fell onto the earth as a fig tree cast her untimely figs. And when she was shaken of a mighty wind. So 
I think this describes in verse number 13 that when we say falling stars, we mean asteroids. Okay, so there'll be asteroids hitting the earth. And um, so, of course, you and I don't want to be around when the asteroids land, right? It just, just an asteroid the size of a mile can do so much damage. And there are so many asteroids out there. What else will happen in the future? Um, and, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is a road together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So um, basically, <clears throat> when, you, when you take a scroll and you open it and you close it, okay, which is what's describing, everything on the paper moves. Okay, There's nothing flat that's unmoved. And it says every mountain and every island will be tossed around. So, um, uh, verse number 15, the kings in the earth and the great men, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, bondmen, free men, hid themselves in the den and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall upon us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So the reason God gives us the, the plagues in the Old Testament is because if John writes about this, everyone will say, well, those are empty threats. We have never seen the power of God. But if you look at, don't turn to it, if you look at Exodus, you see all the ten plagues. Egypt saw the power of God. And because Egypt saw the power of God and Israel saw the power of God, these are not empty threats. It will happen. Okay, And uh, so that's why it was so important for God to send the ten plagues. And, of course, the darkness plague is most important because the darkness plague is one of the few that will be repeated. Now, let's look at the plague and see which one will be repeated out of all the things we read in Joel and Revelation. Um, okay. So the, the, the water into blood, okay? I'm not sure. That's not repeated, is it, Mel? Water into blood in, in Revelation? Is it one of the plagues in Revelation? Okay. So, yeah, I don't think the frog one will be used. I don't think the lice one will, nor the flies. Maybe the moraine, the boils. Um, the hail on fire, okay, that one, that one definitely is used. And the locusts, yes, but the first locust was an easy one. All it did was eat your food. This new locust is open out of hell. It comes out of hell. It stings and bites, and it hurts for a month, okay? And people say, please kill me. It, the pain's so intense. So um, God has... Pretty, um, well, pretty kind uh, plagues. I mean, they're not very vengeful. They're not very painful. Uh, God is very um, kind to the Egyptians. But he's not going to be kind the second time round. Okay, they crucified Jesus. They rejected God's gift. They have to pay for their sins. And now they worship the Antichrist and the beast. And now God says there's a price for that one. So um, uh, so these are not empty threats. So it says in verse number 12, remember the sun and the moon, darkness and exodus? Well, it's going to happen again to a greater degree. Uh, in exodus, you couldn't see beyond yourself, and not even a flicker of light. It was a thick blackness. And uh, verse 14, earthquakes. I don't think there was earthquakes during the time of Moses, but it will come in the future. And, uh, and of course, asteroids out of the sky. So that's pretty big, too. Um, then I'm going to have you turn to one more time. This is going to ha have something, um, Book of Jude. The Book of Jude is something we don't study very much. And I started studying the Book of Jude more and more. The Book of Jude is really easy to study. It's only one book, uh, only 25 verses. So it's an it's easy to be an expert on the book of Jude. Um, so because we're passing out flyers, I just thought a good theme for 
these two weeks is the book of Jude and uh, verse number 21 to 23. So let's look at verse 21. So um, if you had to pick the most popular verse to memorize in the book of Jude, it would be Jude 21. Um, Melvin knows that it's the most popular one. I've read it, and that's my favorite one. And you would talk to most experts, and most experts will always quote verse 21. And then you're going to have to read others to see if you have your own favorite. And I looked it up in the Greek also. So um, it says, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And for some, having compassion, making a difference. And for others, save them with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So the verse is very uh, easy, but what's amazing is this. When I started memorizing my verses back during the pandemic, I said, okay, the first verse I will memorize is Jude, because I don't know a single verse in Jude. I already know a verse in Revelation. So for some reason, I just couldn't memorize this verse, keep yourself in the love of God. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't say keep yourself in the love of God. And I think it was Satan trying to block me by saying, you know, Satan, Satan doesn't want me to memorize verses. And he says, look, if Nathan can't do the first one, then he'll give up and he won't do the second and the third. Now, you know, I have over 100. I wasn't aiming for over 100. I was only aiming for one. Keep yourself in the love of God. Okay. And uh, the second part of the verse um, sounds unusual. So I had to look it up in the Greek. So out of curious, curiosity, how many people actually own that George Berry, excuse me, yeah, George Berry, um, Greek King James Bible. Okay. Okay. Mel and I. Okay. Well, go to um, my recommendation is go to Amazon and buy your uh, Greek Bible. And I think I showed it on the, on the screen, right? It has literally the Greek and underneath it has the English. And then it has the King James on the side. You compare it and it becomes very, very accurate. You say, oh yeah, no wonder no wonder the King James English is kind of garbled here because the original Greek was. I, I personally use the Greek Bible every week, okay, if, if not every day, because I want to read the, before you memorize a verse, you want to say, I want to find the full meaning of the verse. So what I do is I read the one in English, and then I read it in Greek to see if the two match. Now, this is one of the ones I memorized, and the Greek word is even better. Okay, Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto salvation. The word that is kind of awkward is looking. So I looked in the original Greek, and it sounds so much beautiful. Okay, um, Let's see if I can remember it, though. Okay. Um, it says, keep yourself in yourself in the love of God, anticipating for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and the eternal life, okay? So we're looking forward for the day that we go to heaven and have that eternal life. It's not like we're looking now, we're looking into the future. So the, the English said looking, but it didn't say the extra word, looking, anticipating of the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we won't... It, experience till we get into heaven. But look at the second verse. Okay, having compassion uh, for and some for some having compassion making a difference. That's why we pass off flyers. It's not because we need to do it. It's not like I need to get to heaven. It's because I want them to have go, go to heaven because I have compassion for them making a difference. And um, it says of others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Now, how did Nathan Pan get saved? Nathan Pan did not get saved because someone explained about the love of God and I wanted to experience the love of God. Nathan Pan got saved because, verse number 23, I was saved with fear. I actually fear what hell is like. And once, you know, it took, it took me over a year to really say, you know what, if hell is that bad, why don't I want to get saved? So it says in verse 23, with others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. 
I wanted to be part of the, the reason I got saved is I wanted to be part of the fire. Okay. So there's two reasons why people get saved. Some get saved because they want to experience the love of God. Some people get saved because they want to be poured out of the fire. So I'm going to take a poll among the audience. How many here got saved because you want to experience God's love? Okay, how many here got saved because you didn't want to experience the fire? Okay, good. So I think, first, by the way, verse 23 is the theme of this fire passing in that we're trying to pull people out of the fire. Okay, and... Uh, and, oh, yeah, last time, you know, I may not even finish this, but it doesn't matter. Last time we were talking about the book of Jude. And I think I asked people in the audience, uh, who is Jude? And um, and several verses. Okay, so I remember, I think I asked uh, Derek, um, uh, among the brothers, um, which one was the brother of Jesus that was enlisted in Mark 6.3? Did I ask you or ask someone else? Okay. So does anyone remember getting that question? There are several brothers. Okay, so uh, here's a quick review. Um, we have this John 3.16, okay? And if somebody asks you, well, does Jesus have any brothers? And then you say, yeah, of course Jesus has brothers. And you say, well, where do you find it in the Bible? And the answer is, well, if you can remember John 6.16, it's Mark 6, 3. You see the, how you change the numbers right there? Mark 6, we don't turn to Mark 6, 3. It says that Jesus has brothers, and his brothers were Joseph, James, Judah, Simon, right? Four brothers. Okay. And, you know, uh, it's, <laughs> which is why Jesus changed Peter's name from Simon to Peter because there was just too many Simons around. It was Simon the Zealot, Simon Peter, Simon his brother. Okay. So here's one. If someone asked me, asked you, where is it listed the 12 disciples of Jesus? Are we ready with the 316? Go to Mark 316. Okay. So there you are. Permutations of 316. And don't turn to Mark 3.16, but Mark 3.16 says that. And we might have you turn to it. Oh, maybe in Mark 6.16. After a while, I get my permutations wrong. Okay. Maybe it's Mark 6.16. 3.16.16. Oh, we'll turn to it later. Okay, so we know that Jesus had one brother named James. And he wrote the book of James. And Jesus had another brother named Judah, and he wrote the book of Jude. I looked in the Greek today, this morning, Judah. Uh, it says the epistle of Judah. It literally says in Greek, Judah. It doesn't say Judas. But, you know, if you read your Spanish Bible, it says book of Judas. So, <laughs> um, so I guess they didn't get it off the Greek. So Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, this is one one. Servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified of God, the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ and caught. So here's a quiz question I have for you in the audience. So um, where where was Judah during the entire ministry of Jesus? How come I never heard his name before? All of a sudden, he appears before the book of Revelation. Did Judah actually appear in the four Gospels? Okay. And some say he was one of the 12 disciples. Okay. So here's the quiz question for you. Can anyone here name the 12 disciples? Okay. So if you can't name the 12 disciples, I would do it for you. Okay. So 52 Bam Street. Um, so... 52, and this is a shortcut, it's not a good one, but it works. Okay, so, um, because I only have three more minutes, T for Thomas, S for Simon, M for Matthew, A for Andrew, B for Bartholomew, and there are five, there's a five and two, there are five J's, 
and there are two P's. The two P's are Philip, uh, Philip and Peter, the five J's. So I, I'll actually ask people if they know who the five J's are. Um, yeah, I'll ask Elton. You know, he was at Hoover that that evening. Elton, do you know what the five J's stand for? Oh, can you name any of the J's? What? Yeah, the disciples of Jesus, there were five of them that started with a P, Philip and Peter. I mean, two of them, Philip and Peter. Five of them started with J's. Do you, can you name any J name among the 12 disciples? What? Oh, he said James. Okay, thank you. So, um, either believe it or not, or not there, there are two James. Okay. And James had a brother. Um, Elton, what was James's brother's name? Starts with a J. <laughs> and here's the next clue. He wrote the book of Revelation. And another clue. He wrote four other books. John, very good. And uh, I'll ask Gibson because I only have two more minutes. Who's, who's the other two J's? Judas, okay. So one is Judas and one is Judah. Or you can say there are two Judases or two Judas. Okay. So there are two Judas. And for those of you who haven't been keeping up with me, Judah and Judah, Judah is the Hebrew name. Judas is the Greek name. It's the same name. So is it possible that... Jesus, one of Jesus' brother was a disciple, right? Because, you know, you hear nothing about him. All of a sudden, he appears right here. Okay, so maybe we should turn to, maybe I got it wrong. If I, can't, if I get it wrong, we'll continue next time. I'll turn to Mark 16, 6. Okay, Mark 66. And it's not Mark 66, it's Mark 316. Is it 316? Okay, thank you. Okay, so I, I knew the I knew the the code 316 had more meaning. Just that this morning it was kind of dark and somehow it became 616. So is there a pen here for me to fix? And, and even then, it may not be correct. Okay, let's look at Mark 3.16. Everyone knows 3.16, so that's, that's, that's a, an aid. 3.16 uh, says, yeah, I was using a different Bible. Um, oh, yeah, okay. And Simon, uh, he his surname Peter, James the son of Zebedee. Okay, that's John the, the brother of James. Uh, next one, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus. Uh oh. Okay, so it's in another one. So I guess I'll cover that next time. So, what am I trying to prove? If I think it's in Luke. When we turn to Luke next time, there's a clue that this Judah is the brother of Jesus. Okay, And uh, I think I wrote it down this morning in Luke and somehow it didn't appear here, but we'll find out more about him next time. Okay, so let's bow for a word of prayer. Okay, dear God, we want to thank you uh, for the miracles in Exodus because we know they're going to be big miracles coming up in Revelation. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're back until 11. A uh, reminder, we have flyer passing again this coming Friday at Hoover. We'll talk more about it in the second half. Okay, great.